Tammuz, so the story goes, was gored to death by a wild boar in a hunting accident when he was 40 years old. The 40 days of weeping for Tammuz was instituted one day for each year of his life, in which sun god worshipers would deny themselves a pleasure in this life for the sake of Tammuz's pleasure in the afterlife. When Tammuz's mother died many years later, the exalted Queen of Heaven was sent back to earth by the gods on the first Sunday after the vernal equinox. Nimrod's wife arrived in a giant egg which landed in the Euphrates River and broke open to allow her to emerge reincarnated as the bare-breasted goddess of sexual desire, Easter. To proclaim her divinity, Easter changed a bird into an egg-laying rabbit. In this dingy Hinnom Valley Tammuz cave, the occult priest would impregnate virgins on the altar of Easter at the Easter sunrise service, and a year later they sacrificed those three-month-old infants on the same altar and dyed Easter eggs in the blood of those sacrificed babies. To this day, one Christian denomination only allows their Easter eggs to be dyed a single specific color, blood red. They have no idea how the tradition started or what it rehearses. But now you know, Easter Sunday is now the day that culminates the 40 days of weeping for Tammuz, called by many Lent. On this day, entire denominations continue a tradition of slaughtering the wild boar that killed Tammuz and eating ham on Easter Sunday. There is one date that I assure you, Yahshua did not rise from the grave, Easter Sunday. Frequently, Easter and Passover are an entire month apart. Why? They represent the worship of two different gods. Easter is celebrated according to a pagan sun god calendar. Passover is celebrated according to the observance of the biblical new moon and the ripening of the barley in the land of Israel. Yahshua kept the feast of Passover. All of the rehearsals that were embedded in that feast were fulfilled the year of his death and resurrection. He was the final Passover sacrifice. His sinless blood paid the price for our redemption. On the other hand, Easter is a rehearsal of child sacrifice and fertility rites of pagan sun god worshipers. Which celebration should you keep? That depends on which god you serve. It's your choice. But now you understand why the Holy One instructs us. Do not learn the way of the heathen and how they worship their gods and then do the same to me. It is an abomination. Christmas and Easter are not the celebrations of the birth and resurrection of Yahshua of Nazareth, but the watered-down continuation of child sacrifice festivals that were hatched in Babylon 2,000 years before his birth. We all recognize that the pagan calendar, which has been adopted by the Christian world, names every day of the week and nearly every month of the year after a pagan god or fallen angel. But many are surprised to see that the fourth month on the modern Jewish calendar is named after the pagan god Tammuz. In direct violation of the Torah, thou shalt not allow the names of other gods to come out of your mouth. I only speak the names of pagan gods for the same reasons that the prophets of Israel spoke their names, to expose the sick, twisted traditions that we have inherited from our disobedient ancestors. Religious schemes have been fabricated by the mind of man that have nothing to do with how God desires to be worshiped. Pop Christian culture adorns itself with the latest hip Jesus apparel and jewelry that asked, WWJD, what would Jesus do? But seldom opens the scriptures to find out. Yahshua found the place where it was written, said what was written, and did what was written. He did not make up his own theology as he went along. He always obeyed the Torah and said that the Father seeks those who would worship him in spirit and in the truth that was written in stone over 3,400 years ago. When we are ignorant of his instructions, we naturally slip back into Babylonian sun god worship while we say we are doing it for him. Israel expressed the same ignorance of God's ways when we built a golden calf and said, Tomorrow is a feast to Yahweh. He was absolutely furious. He wanted to incinerate us all. Occasionally I hear the emotionally charged defense, that is not what Christmas and Easter mean to me. 
but I don't care what they mean to you. I don't worship you. The Almighty says that it is an abomination to him. Just as the Almighty told Abraham in Genesis, he tells those living at the end of the age in the book of Revelation, come out of Babylon. Yeah! <laughs> Throughout this series, we will be exploring the Hebrew Scriptures, both Testaments, from an Hebraic or Jewish perspective. The Great Commission was to the Jew first, and the Jewish disciples gave their lives to spread the good news of the Messiah to the Gentile world. We are going to let the Jews interpret the Scriptures that the Jews have written, and I promise to give ample time to allow the Gentiles to interpret all the Scriptures that the Gentiles have written. I'm Michael Rood, inviting you to join us again next time for A Rood Awakening. And I'll see you when the smoke clears. <laughs>